Welcome back. My name is David Hopper and this video is part of a 26 part series that follows the alphabet from A to Z. Each letter represents an important part of the launch process for new ministries, new campuses, and new churches. In this video, we'll be talking about L, linking arms in the community. Have you ever seen kids play together? You hear the word mine a lot. It is an interesting part of our nature that we're born with that says, this is mine, and what you have, I also want. As kids, we continue to want more, no matter what it is. It can be something totally bad for us, but we want it. And the truth is, we have to be taught that that is wrong. When I look at our world with broad strokes, it seems like many people never grow out of this mentality. We want more, no matter how much we have. We want more, even if more would actually hurt us more than help us. There has to be a point where we either learn or we teach ourselves that mine is not the best way to live. PhD, chair of the Elliott Person Department of Child Development at Tufts University says, preschoolers are so focused on their own wants and needs that sharing just isn't a priority. In the Bible, 1 Corinthians 10, 24 says, nobody should seek his own good, but the good of others. Some of the best people of our history understood this truth. Mother Teresa comes to mind. In 1950, she founds the Missionaries of Charity that has over 4,500 nuns and was active in 133 countries in 2012. Teresa first started as a teacher, but was increasingly disturbed by the poverty that was surrounding her in Calcutta. This caused her to found a school. With no income, she begged for food and supplies and experienced doubt, loneliness, temptation to return back to comfort of the convent life. She even wrote this in one of her journals. Our Lord wants me to be a free nun covered with the poverty of the cross. Today, I learned a good lesson. The poverty of the poor must be so hard for them. While looking for a home, I walked and walked till my arms and legs ached. I thought how much they must ache in body and soul, looking for a home, food, and health. Then the comfort of Loretta, her former congregation, came to tempt me. You have only to say the word, and all that will be yours again. The tempter kept on saying, Of free choice, my God, and out of love for you, I desire to remain and do whatever be your holy will in my regard. I did not let a single tear come. You see the heart change in her, these stories of caring for humanity, going beyond self, seeing beyond your own comfort. These dot our history. It's not the norm. Every generation has a few, but you have to look for them past the walls of your comfortable home. To be honest, most people do not want to see the unhealthy, the poor, those in need, or those who are being abused. We want to pretend that that world does not exist and instead continue to acquire more and call it mine. The Bible has another verse in Philippians 2, 4 that reads, Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. As we think about launching something new, build it into the DNA of this new thing, the idea of being unselfish. People will notice when you care and serve your community. How do we do this? First, we build bridges to leaders within the community that we're trying to reach. If you're launching something within a city that will have a local impact, start with the city website. Where I live, they're currently running a clean parks campaign. They're running a senior program and a teen program. Three ways you can jump in with what the city sees as the current biggest need right now. It's on the front page of the website. Every city will be different, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Be a blessing to the need the city sees as most valuable right now. There are adult sports programs, classes, advertising opportunities that you can immediately get involved in that would connect you to people within this new city you're trying to reach. As you get involved in these public events, you'll learn who the gatekeepers are, the people of peace, the influencers of this community. Perhaps you'll find some early adopters to what you're launching by joining these leagues of the city. There's a calendar of events on the website. If you're looking for a building, you can find city facilities, city maps, services that are provided. You can even get a job within the city if you're launching something slowly. This inside connection can help you make great inroads into what you're trying to do. City websites 
always have two or three or more job openings. There are social media sites to connect with, photo galleries, new resident information. There's public safety services you can look into to see what's already happening within the city, why it's happening, and how you can help and be a part of it. The point is, if you're launching something new in a city, the city website needs to be your best friend. This was a very practical angle to building bridges, but let's talk abstract about this subject for a moment. Building bridges is also about speaking well of those you are similar to in what you're launching. As I launch churches, we never go into a community saying why we're better than all the other churches that are currently there. That would be very counterproductive. Instead, our vision frame usually shows that there's less than 10% of the people, which is a high number by the way, living in this new community we're entering, currently believing in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Even less than that, go to a church. There is not one city in the world that's just killing it with enough churches. So there's no need to try to kill churches as we're launching a new one. We need to connect with every church in that city before we ever launch and see what is working and not working and how we can be a great addition to that city. With what you're launching, do not see competition. See pioneers that have gone before you and see if you can partner with them to launch something that is a great addition to the city. Bridge building is speaking well of others no matter what. This will be important in the early process of your launch because most likely you'll face a lot of opposition in the early stages. Do not use that to say anything negative even in private conversation about another leader or organization. Be above the fray and work through each challenge in a positive way. It will be noticed and it will keep you healthy. Season every conversation regarding other leaders and organization with words of affirmation. Proactively reach out to offer support and resources. Make it a personal mission for all you interact with to be successful. If everybody's doing well, we all gain. If you're launching something to a nation, you do everything the same way but on a national level. If you're launching something globally, everything on the same but on a global level. Go all in with bridge building as a part of what you're launching. You want to build a diverse team. If everyone looks like you on your team, or your team is just built on people that you like to be around, you're not gonna be nearly as effective as you could be to your city. Your team needs to be multicultural, economically diverse, socially diverse. Awkward introverts can be some of the greatest allies. Be age diverse, so on and so forth. Take the lead. Dan Pelota at a 2013 TED Talk said this, the things we've been taught to think about giving and about charity and the nonprofit sector are actually undermining the causes that we love and our profound yearning to change the world. What he was referencing is how we publicly shame nonprofits and charities if they spend too much money on overhead. We want 100% of our giving to go into the field or to the people that we're trying to help. Charities are praised in their frugalness. They're admired for low overhead and limited marketing. At the same time, they're criticized if they spend too much money on resources or staff or any item that doesn't go directly to the field. So with little money for marketing, no focus on branding, not enough staff, it's little wonder that New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof once commented, any brand of toothpaste is peddled with far more sophistication than the life-saving work of aid groups. See, if we do not spend money on building a recognizable brand, marketing to grow what we're launching, events for public awareness, what kind of lasting impact can we really have to those that we wanna help? We need to launch well, launch big. I know that may not sound good to some, but the bigger you are, the more you're able to do in the long run to make the most dramatic impact possible to our world. When you take the lead in what you're launching, you're building something great for long-term results. You put the linking arms with the community into the DNA of what you're launching. You start with building bridges. You know your city or your nation's website and all the ways to effectively deploy your team. You get involved in social media and you figure out the pioneer leaders of where you're going. 
You look for strategic partnerships and you speak well of all the people trying to launch and make our world a better place. Then you continue by building a strong brand that is highly effective and growing so you're not a one-time event but rather a long-term partner with those you're trying to make a difference with. Be a leader who can see the 10-year plan while also living out a day-to-day -day plan of value. Your homework for this letter is to study the city website or wherever you're going to launch and tell me in our next coaching session 10 ways that you can make a difference right now in the city that you want to go to. I can't wait to hear about it the next time we get together. Next time, we'll be talking about M for messaging. This is all about building your brand. It is going to be awesome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.